Yes, diabetes remission is possible. Let's understand how to safely achieve and maintain diabetes remission. While discussing or prescribing a diabetes remission plan, I always keep my patient's safety in mind first. And while designing the remission plan, I would do it very scientifically with the patient and my team all together. This graph summarizes the most well understood procedures or interventions to achieve diabetes remission. These include metabolic, weight loss or bariatric surgery procedures, nutritional interventions like low carbohydrate or low calorie diets. What is common in all of these procedures and interventions that they lead to diabetes remission via inducing very large amounts of weight loss. Hence, it is right to say that the quantum of weight loss induced by these procedures or interventions is directly proportionate to the chances of achieving remission of diabetes. Because of all known procedures, weight loss surgery causes the greatest amount of weight loss. It's the most effective way to induce long-term diabetes remission. When chosen correctly and done well, the results of diabetes remission achievement may go up to 80%. Weight loss surgery acts by decreasing calorie intake, decreasing or preventing absorption of food, and altering diabetes or obesity causing hormones. Of major concerns are the possible side effects of surgery, the cost of surgery, the requirement for a long-term follow-up and mandatory compliance with the prescribed lifestyle post bariatric surgery to maintain the diabetes remission. A low carbohydrate diet example includes one in which the carbohydrate intake per day is restricted to 130 grams. A very low carbohydrate diet or commonly known as a keto diet, the allowance for carbohydrate intake per day is as less as 20 to 30 grams with unrestricted protein intake and rest of the calories being provided by fat in the diet. Using such an intervention of calorie restriction in relatively young subjects with a duration of diabetes less than six years, not on insulin, it has been shown that diabetes remission can be achieved in up to 46% of the subjects and the remission maintained for a period of two years in about 36% of the subjects. Unlike surgery, there is no solid evidence of the long-term effectiveness in maintaining diabetes remission with nutritional interventions. Important limitations of the dietary interventions include an early plateau of weight loss, lesser amount of weight loss as compared to the weight loss surgery procedures, metabolic complications, very importantly, episodes of very severely low blood sugar levels of what we call as hypoglycemia, especially so when these interventions are prescribed to patients with diabetes on insulin therapy. Certain metabolic complications, including increase in the uric acid levels, increased blood urea, and in some studies it has been shown these interventions can increase the levels of the bad cholesterol, which is LDL cholesterol. Moreover, the horizon of diabetes remission is excitingly expanding with increasing research and development of drugs for diabetes and obesity. Some of these approved drugs and those nearing approval promise a weight loss nearing that achieved with surgical procedures. Tailoring nutritional exercise interventions along with these newer drugs to me gives a possibility, a realistic possibility of helping more and more diabetic patients 
achieve long term remission and why not possible equivalent to that achieved with weight loss surgery finally whatever the strategy for diabetes remission be it must be medically supervised and assisted maintained and followed up by the diabetes care team we'll be back with the fourth and the concluding session of the diabetes remission series